welcome back guys now after achalasia cardia now let's continue with the other esophageal disorders the esophageal disorder which i am going to discuss now here is called as the des diffuse esophageal spasms in the name itself it says diffuse means throughout the esophagus there is spasm means abnormal contractions are going to be seen okay so in diffuse esophageal spasm there will be abnormal contractions of the esophagus so achalasia cardia is the one which is going to affect in young females where there is progressive dysphagia now here this diffuse esophageal spasm is going to be seen in middle aged females okay both females only here and there females only but there is young females here it's middle aged females now what are the clinical features because of achalasia cardia think because of achalasia cardia the patient is going to have progressive dysphagia here also same when the esophagus is contracting so much do you think proper swallowing will happen no there will be dysphagia dysphagia but not only that you should understand the esophagus whatever is there in the chest cavity it is contracting so much so there will be pain so there will be chest pain and it is so severe it mimics it mimics what it is going to mimic heart attack or simply in simple words mi it's going to mimic the mi so diffuse esophageal spasm there is diffuse spasms of the esophagus is going to be seen seen in the middle aged females and dysphagia and chest pain are the most common symptoms these are the most common symptoms now this diffuse esophageal uh, spasms they are going to be aggravated in certain conditions like taking cold fluids aggravated by cold fluids or stress okay stress and cold fluids can aggravate this condition next the barium swallow barium swallow in achalasia cardia what barium swallow reveals the barium swallow is going to reveal a bird beak appearance or the rattle appearance now here on my top you can very clearly see that how the esophagus is looking because of the abnormal contractions it is looking like a cork screw so on barium swallow there is cork screw appearance cork screw appearance Okay, cork screw appearance is seen on the barium swallow. Now, next, what is the treatment option? The treatment option available is it's excessive spasms, right? Excessive contractions. So, what we can do to relieve these muscles? We can use calcium channel blockers. So, calcium channel blockers are going to be used actually this is a very small topic i don't know where to integrate it so i just kept it here actually now i just want to discuss mainly about the gastroesophageal reflux disease in this video but okay let me have also a discussion of the diffuse esophageal spasm so with this the diffuse esophageal spasm topic is going to be completed is completed middle aged females seen in middle aged females the spasms are going to be aggravated with the emotional stress or with the cold fluids now on the barium esophag uh, barium a uh, swallow it's going to show the cork screw appearance cork screw appearance which is also called as a rosary bead appearance okay it's looking like a beads okay here you can see that looks looking like a beads so rosary bead appearance or the cork screw appearance is going to be seen and the treatment is going to be the calcium channel blockers and also you can use nitrates also okay nitrates can also be used so the ds topic is completed now after this let's discuss about a condition called as the gastro esophageal reflux disease so what exactly is happening in the gastro esophageal reflux disease that is a grd is in the name itself it is there gastro gastro means what stomach esophageal means what esophagus so there is a reflux from stomach into the esophagus what is getting refluxed acid so there is an acid reflux from the stomach back into the esophagus so that is called as a gastroesophageal reflux disease why it might happen normally in between the esophagus okay normally in between the esophagus and the stomach there is a lower esophageal sphincter 
and the lower esophageal sphincter is contracted and there is some pressure with some pressure it is contracting okay let me write here normal normal lower esophageal sphincter okay how much pressure is there now the pressure in the lower esophagus is going to be 10 to 26 mm hg okay normal pressure in the lower esophageal sphincter if the pressure is coming less than 10 mm hg if the pressure is going less than 10 mm hg that can actually cause gastroesophageal reflux disease okay now how to put the diagnosis the diagnosis is going to be the diagnosis is going to be the gold standard one is 24 hour ambulatory pH monitoring okay so 24 hour ambulatory pH monitoring which means for example you can see on my top this lady is having a device there is a device now this device is having a probe this probe is going to enter into the esophagus now it is all the time monitoring the pH within the esophagus or what is the normal pH. Now if there is a gastroesophageal reflux disease, acid is going to reflux back into the esophagus. When acid is refluxing back into the esophagus, esophagus what happens? The pH falls in the esophagus because of the acidicity, pH falls. The more the number of times the acid refluxes, the more the number of times the probe will uh, find it. Okay. So this 24 hour ambulatory pH monitoring is the gold standard investigation for gastroesophageal reflux disease. Now, if you ask me, what are the problems? For example, because of this gastroesophageal reflux, what is the problem? The most common symptom, the most common symptom is going to be heartburn. Okay, heartburn. Why? Because acid is getting reflux back into the esophagus, right? So patient will feel like you know it's a burning sensation in the chest. That's called as a heartburn. Now, what are the complications? Let me write here complications. What are the complications? In the number one complication is going to be reflux, esophagitis. Reflex esophagitis, that is the most common. What is reflex esophagitis? Acid is going back to the esophagus, causing inflammation within the esophagus. That is a reflex esophagitis. The reflux of the acid is causing the esophagitis. That is the most common complication. So, the second complication is going to be Schatzky's ring. Schatzky's ring. So, what exactly is this, uh, is this uh, Schatzky's ring? You can very clearly see here in this uh, endoscopic image, there is a web like structure. Okay, concentric web like structure that is forming in the lower esophagus, in the lower esophagus and the gastroesophageal junction. This ring like structure, which is seen as a complication due to GERD, is called as a Schatzky's ring. Even here, you can see the Schatzky's ring in the barium swallow. Okay, here you can see the Schatzky's ring. That's one of the complications. Other complications include Barrett's esophagus. Is the complication and adeno carcinoma of esophagus. These are the complications. You can ask me what exactly is this Barrett's esophagus. Barrett's esophagus means because of the reflux of the acid into the esophagus, the squamous epithelium, whatever is there in the esophagus, normally esophagus is lined by the stratified squamous epithelium. Okay, the stratified squamous epithelium. It is going to convert into columnar epithelium. Okay, so the squamous epithelium is going to be converted into the columnar epithelium in the condition of GERD. So, what exactly is this? This is a metaplastic change. One type of epithelium is getting converted into other type of epithelium. One type of cell is changing into the other type of cell. So, this is called as the metaplasia. Due to the metaplasia, Barrett's esophagus will happen. And if still continuously, continuously this insult is happening, acid, acid, acid reflux, acid reflux, at the end of the day, there can be a chance of cancer, is of, cancer of the esophagus, that is a adenocarcinoma of the esophagus. So, these are the complications. And how we can treat this condition? The treatment can be done with proton pump inhibitors, PPIs. Okay, proton pump inhibitors. Why? Because these proton pump inhibitors, what they will do? They will decrease the acid production.
okay not only proton pump inhibitors you can also use h2 blockers histamine blockers okay even the system in blockers what they will do is they will decrease the acid production whenever there is less acid there will be less reflux so the, the problem the heartburn the problem will be solved so this is the treatment completed so with this the gastroesophageal reflux disease important points are completed hope the video is helpful thank you